If we were to describe Gavi in one word, it, it really would be that power of scale. We buy vaccines for 60% of the world's children. Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, was formed 20 years ago. So the initial start of Gavi was actually led by Bill Gates, who had this vision. He understood that this was the most cost-effective intervention and it wasn't getting out. Well, it was in the late 1990s that our foundation was thinking, you know, what should our priorities be? And what seemed most obvious is that we should help invent new vaccines. But to our surprise, as we met with people, they explained that there actually were a few vaccines that were great, uh, but they were only getting uh, to the middle-income and rich countries. And in fact, the kids who were at risk of dying of these diseases weren't getting those vaccines. So Gavi was created to say, how can we accelerate getting these powerful new technologies to those who need them the most? So it's both new vaccines and more coverage of the existing vaccines. That's the Gavi mission. So one of the things that Gavi gets called is the greatest secret in, in public health. And, and the reason is, is that Gavi acts as an alliance. So the idea of an alliance here is to bring together the key people working on immunization. So the core of the alliance is WHO, UNICEF, the World Bank, and the Gates Foundation, but also the private sector, to bring the manufacturers, to bring the countries, to bring research institutions. So everybody together could drive forward uh, vaccine availability. One problem Gavi set out to solve was the high cost of vaccines. The solution? Pool demand from countries and guarantee large vaccine orders. Risk drops for manufacturers, that encourages competition and a reduction in prices. What you needed is a guarantee so the manufacturers would make the investments in, in scaling up their production. Gavi then provides these vaccines to countries at a reduced price. Everybody contributes something. So even the poorest country contributes initially 20 cents a dose. That's been critical, not just to co-finance, but also to begin to build in those countries a line item for vaccines and hard currency. As countries get wealthier, they pay more. We have 16 countries that have um, fully um, transitioned out of Gavi and are now are fully self-financing their vaccines. To ensure those vaccines reach the children who need them, Gavi has invested in strengthening healthcare systems through workforce training, public education, and new technologies like drones that can deliver medical supplies. Gavi's had to invent a lot of new approaches. They had to look at the cold chain because uh, these vaccines need to stay cold or they're spoiled and don't work. We've been trying to use innovation to upgrade the cold chain. The new systems using solar, using nanotechnology, new materials are incredibly efficient and are able to keep vaccines cold even when you're off the electric grid. Thanks to these innovations and others, Gavi has had a tremendous impact. You can directly attribute over 10 million lives being saved. To do that, we've had to vaccinate you know, over 600 million children over all these years. And the pipeline of new ideas, new vaccines, means Gavi's got a lot more it can do in the future. As an epidemiologist, I love the numbers, I love the data, I'm always coming back to that, but it's also about what it means to people. And it's extraordinary. You talk to a family who has lost their, their child or their child is permanently disabled because of a disease that we have an inexpensive, highly effective vaccine, that's a tragedy and it shouldn't happen in today's day and age. <laughs>